one's in blue and the other one's in black. So uh, in that case, uh, it is much better to try to find some usage statistics or some patterns or anything measurable or any measurement how to decide like if it is better to have something blue or if it is something uh, better to do in black. Um, when even this uh, fails, like there is no uh, no possibility to actually find uh, find some statistics or or some measurable way, uh, then we have to uh, use human inter uh, interface guidelines. Um, that's because uh, like sometimes we just need to decide even where it is like not not completely not completely um, <laughs> given that that one way is better than the other um, previously we were using the gnome Higgs uh, so that uh, so because they they were existing but uh, uh, we are now uh, in the process of building uh, our own Higgs and uh, this is mostly thanks to work uh, there uh, of Heiko and also of Jay Phillips uh, who are uh, the, the, the main authors of the new Higgs. And uh, also for the, code uh, so for, for the conflict resolutions uh, it is important not to, bl not to block uh, stuff. So uh, if, uh, if uh, it is not possible to decide like what is better but there's code uh, for some, uh, for some uh, feature or new feature uh, let's just try to integrate it and then uh, we will see the feedback of the users maybe uh, the ones who previously didn't like the idea will start liking it when they see it for real or maybe uh, it will just turn out that uh, we will be uh, just terribly um, terribly flamed in the bugzilla and then of course we need to um, go to the step one try to find against consensus or just to revert it or or anything like that Um, another concept uh, that we would like to have and uh, I hope that we are having uh, in, uh, in the design team is uh, that we are, results, uh, we are oriented on results. So that means uh, that when you are just doing something, building your crystal castle somewhere in the corner and nobody uh, pays attention to that and you are not getting it to, to the Git repository, you are doing something wrong. So um, we try to encourage people to actually, uh, when they are doing something, um, to, to get it directly to the, uh, the uh, LibreOffice code. Uh, so it, uh, it works uh, perfectly with, uh, uh, with icons. So we have uh, lots of people committing, committing new icons directly to the repository. So it is not necessary to have some developer that would take care of the icons. Um, the people can do it just themselves. It is uh, also uh, similar with the uh, with the dialogues uh, because dialogues can be edited now um, using Glade. So it is possible for the people to actually like take the dialogue, um, improve it in some way, and push it themselves. The uh, Garrett code view review system, of course, needs a bit of technical knowledge uh, how to how to work with that. But again, uh, as I pointed out, we have a dedicated LibreOffice design channel where we are glad and happy to help uh, how, to, how to get set up and, uh, and get it into the repository. Uh, about the communication, um, I mentioned once that, uh, that uh, mm, well, uh, some um, debates or some, some uh, well, trying to find what is better can lead to, to some a huge amount of comments, but this is something that we would like to avoid. Uh, so avoiding bike shedding uh, is, uh, is a, a very big priority in all this. So when uh, it smells like a bike shedding, uh, it is good to get it uh, to some communication channel that, uh, that is uh, like more fit for resolving uh, of some things. Uh, of, of things like this. So when in Bugzilla you see that, uh, that, uh, um, that an issue has uh, 50 commands, something is wrong, and you uh, want to get it to, to IRC or even to a Hangout. Um, everybody is welcome uh, to, to our G Plus Hangouts. Um, currently it happens every Wednesday. Uh, we would like to change the, the time a bit, um, but uh, we will, we will uh, create some, some doodle 
for that uh, most probably. But so far it is uh, every Wednesday, um, um, 7 p.m. of the European time. So count your time zone accordingly. And uh, the, the URL for the, for the Hangout is, uh, uh, is announced on the LibreOffice Design um, IRC channel. And also I invite people that, uh, that are usually coming to these meetings, of course. And yeah, so we want to include as many people as possible. As I told you at the very beginning, you do not even have to know that you are part of the design team if you happened to, to create some feature that touches the UI. I try to collect uh, these things uh, to the, uh, in the uh, reports from the, from the design meetings weekly. Uh, so more people will know about your work uh, that you have done. Uh, I also encourage people to actually add uh, their work to the, uh, to the release notes um, pages so that you know, more people know about this. Um, we appreciate every contribution. So whatever small uh, you do as the improvements, it counts. Uh, so every, every paper cut, as Michael said, like if there's too many paper cuts, it, <laughs> you can, uh, well, cut your uh, entire hand. So. <laughs> so, yeah, just come to us and, and do stuff with us. Um, and one thing that, that, uh, that I mentioned already, we are, uh, we, we, uh, are open to change. Uh, it is not necessary that the uh, thing that we think uh, it should, s things should be done is the best way. Uh, so, of course, uh, it is possible to persuade us that, that uh, something, uh, something is done in the wrong way, even if we uh, think that it is not. And uh, like, if you have code uh, that supports that, uh, we will just integrate it and uh, like, we'll see what's, uh, uh, what's going on in there. And um, feel encouraged to, to just do uh, user interface changes. Um, better, of course, if you, if you talk to us um, so that we can, uh, we can uh, see if it fits uh, the hicks uh, that are in the development. But even without that, um, like the, code, uh, the code is important. So, so like push it, commit it and uh, we will try to work with you uh, how to do it better if, it, if the first, uh, first cut of this is not the best one. So in action, um, how it looked like. So uh, LibreOffice 4.4 uh, was actually thought as uh, to be the most uh, beautiful LibreOffice ever. But it is not true anymore because we have uh, a LibreOffice 5.0, and it is even better. So I hope that, uh, that uh, this trend will just continue uh, because there are so many nice features uh, that, uh, that are being developed now. Uh, so counting uh, Shimon's uh, new approach to the, uh, to the remo uh, opening of remote files, or Mogi is now working on the uh, sidebar for actually um, like um, Mm, editing charts and adding stuff to charts, and Tomáš uh, is doing uh, doing sidebar for document themes. So uh, lots of lots of nice things uh, are in the in the development just now. Uh, so I hope that it will uh, it will become in the uh, 5.1, and if not, then in some in some later version. So just to summarize what has happened in the last year, uh, it was the CIFAC, uh, icons and breeze. So, uh, uh, so CIFR uh, icons are uh, constantly in the development. Uh, so it's, uh, it's an ongoing effort. But Breeze was just a complete surprise. It started with a uh, few icons uh, from Yuri and uh, Andreas. But then Andreas Kainz uh, just did a tremendous amount of work. And in three months, he has designed all the 1,000 icons which uh, are now included in the, uh, the 5.0. And actually, uh, we did uh, it as the default uh, on OS X, uh, OS X platform, because many people uh, were asking us for, uh, for doing that. And uh, really, that was awesome and, uh, and, and lots of work that he has put uh, into that. So thanks so much. Templates. Uh, the approach uh, to the templates uh, was, uh, was improving over the years. Uh, we have got the templates uh, um, 
selector improved thanks to uh, many consequent um, summer of codes. Uh, finally, it was integrated into the start center, so you are able to select the templates directly from the from the start center. And also uh, during the uh, the release of uh, 4.4, uh, we ran a, a contest uh, for people to actually contribute templates and uh, the results uh, were uh, quite good. So we have uh, many new templates since the 4.4 for the, uh, for, the uh, for the presentation backgrounds and, and presentations uh, in general. Uh, we were running also a competition for 5.0, uh, but unfortunately we didn't uh, we didn't pick the the results in time, so it was not uh, not included uh, in 5.0. Uh, but um, Jay is now going through them, and uh, I hope that uh, soon they will appear in master, so that they will be part of 5.1. Um, Lots of effort uh, was uh, by Jay um, done uh, in the area of toolbars. So the toolbars were uh, reworked uh, based on the usability statistics that were done um, done quite some time ago, even in the open office times. Uh, but uh, he has put lots of uh, uh, lots of uh, functionality that was used by people and was not uh, like quickly accessible in the toolbars. So finally, uh, they appeared in the toolbars. Um, he has done it uh, for all the applications. I think he has started with uh, with Writer, but uh, extended that to uh, to Calc and Impress as well. Also, uh, there was the change tracking toolbar, uh, thanks to Samuel, and uh, thanks to uh, thanks to Jay as well. Uh, context menus, uh, that is another area where Jay uh, used the, the statistics. So, um, like uh, one of the things uh, that is uh, very used are the copy, um, cut and paste. Uh, so they became uh, became more prominent in the in the uh, context menus, and also the context menus uh, became much more compressed. Uh, because uh, when there were some 20 entries in context menus, nobody was very actually using them because nobody was able to find the way uh, in the in the context menus. So they are much more packed uh, these days um, with uh, much better much better selection of of the stuff uh, that you can do with the context menus. Uh, new uh, color select, uh, selector. Uh, that was initially implemented uh, using uh, during summer of code, uh, but then uh, many people actually start using that uh, new color selector in various parts uh, of LibreOffice where uh, previously there was only a list of colors. So uh, I think in Impress we had a only a list of colors, uh, which is very inconvenient. Instead, that was switched to using uh, the new color picker that even allows you to uh, choose a color from the RGB scheme and, and all these things that you would expect from color selector. Better drop downs. Uh, so, uh, so again, uh, for example, uh, that was one of the things that, wa uh, that was missing in the, in the toolbars, that uh, spacing was not there. And uh, uh, so luckily we were able to reuse the, uh, the drop down that was uh, originally desi designed for, for the sidebar. Uh, so uh, we have uh, extended that a bit so that it was possible to use it in the, in the toolbars as well. And so, so the code is shared and, and the functionality is there, similarly for the, for the bullets and numbering. And styles, uh, lots of uh, things has happened uh, in the styles. So the, uh, the previews in the, uh, in the toolbar uh, tool for the, for, um, for the styles selection uh, was, uh, was uh, extended so that it is uh, even possible to update the styles similarly. How is it in the Google Docs? And also uh, Tomas created uh, these previews of the styles uh, also in the sidebar, uh, which, is, which is nice to use. And uh, also a great uh, new feature that appeared in the 5.0. Uh, was uh, was cropping an image using mouse because previously it was only possible uh, to actually crop the image using typing in uh, the the numbers. 
and of course uh, you usually do not know like if you want to crop it at uh, like 10 centimeters or, or 12 or, or whatever so it is much more convenient to use a mouse so thanks so much to Philip for implementing that so what's next of course like uh, as I explained uh, there is no um, no way how to force somebody to actually do something new for the uh, for the user experience uh, but our hope is that uh, we make the 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 work on this uh, fun enough so that uh, you actually um, get interested in hacking and the uh, the u user experience and uh, and the ui in general and uh, um, if you do so, uh, please come to our uh, RSC channel, and uh, we will uh, we can uh, talk about like how what what is the feature you are working on, how we can it uh, how can we do it uh, visible, um, user friendly, and uh, and usable uh, the best way. Uh, Jay also collects something that is called Design UX Roadmap. Uh, but uh, it is more a collection of things uh, that is ongoing. It is not that uh, like uh, we would say like uh, you have to do this and this, th that's the other way around. It's uh, collecting uh, things that are going on and that we know about and that uh, we would like to help uh, from the design point of view. So if uh, there is something that, uh, that we are working on and uh, we do not know that, uh, please tell us. So I have... Uh, the document downloaded here, I think. So, uh, so it contains uh, like it's uh, it's tracked now in in the Google Docs uh, um, document, but uh, here you can see that for the 5.1, uh, quite a lot is happening. Uh, so the reorganization of the menu bar of the menu bar is ongoing. Jay is working on that. Um, document themes uh, that that Tomas is working on. Thanks so much. Um, then uh, the already mentioned work uh, by, uh, in the uh, in the charts is some somewhere here as well, I think. But you can see there's lots of uh, lots of things happening already for the for the 5.1. So I think that it will be even even more beautiful version than the most beautiful version ever. So that's basically it. What I wanted to, to say. Help is uh, uh, most appreciated. Uh, we have non-programming tasks, so um, like the drawing icons or uh, improving the dialogues uh, using Glade, also collecting usability feedback. Um, you can also help us in the Bugzilla just by reporting things that uh, that you um, know that are done bad, uh, badly, and uh, even if you have ideas how to do it better. Uh, ideally, with uh, uh, in a way uh, that for which you can provide some implementation that would be awesome, of course. Um, we have uh, in programming lots of things to work on, uh, starting from the easy hacks um, that are reported uh, as easy hacks with topic UI, uh, but also there are some larger things uh, that uh, would be in the pipeline uh, in case you would have more time and would be more interested in the, in in hacking as this. So, whatever, join the LibreOffice Design on, uh, on Freenode and we will help you to get started. So, this collects uh, all the resources that are here and that's it from me. Thank you so much. So, questions? No questions. What does the statistics for um, the design of the Bitcoin exchange, for example? Sorry? What is the statistic for? Uh, um, how do you gather the statistics or how, how do you yeah. get the statistics about the uh, yeah. So, um, so currently, uh, the statistics that we are using are uh, quite old. Uh, they are still from the Open Office Org Times uh, from 2009, I think. <laughs> Uh, because there used to be some uh, horrible hack how to actually see what, uh, what command and, and where uh, it was used. Uh, in the meantime, 
in the meantime, uh, this got bitterton and uh, this is not possible. So uh, we have only the results of the actual uh, of the actual collecting of the feedback, uh, but do not way, uh, have a new way how to how to do it currently. Uh, so I've hacked uh, some some basic uh, basic implementation of what would be uh, possible to use, uh, but it is currently uh, currently uh, not finished. So the feedback uh, cannot be collected. You can switch it on in your LibreOffice and uh, you know um, use that and see what you, you were using and uh, like what commands were called and how many times. Uh, which is uh, which is written on your on your screen uh, when you finish working with LibreOffice, but of course, like uh, n none, uh, no collection of these things uh, is happening at the moment, unfortunately. Actually, another question. Yes. Are there plans to remove the formatting toolbar now that most of that functionality is in the sidebar? Uh, the formatting toolbar. Yes. At the top. Oh, huh. I'm not sure. I would have to ask Jay because he's doing the work. So I think we've tried that with some some of the tool, um, some of the formatting elements, but then users started to scream saying that like, okay, it's in the sidebar, but then that's not a full functional replacement. So please put it back to the toolbar. I'm just wondering because I have the same. Like the, the general concept that is uh, that is uh, uh, working so far was that uh, the the functionality that is uh, uh, like uh, like general uh, should be in the toolbars and uh, stuff that is more like context like should be in the sidebar. Um, but as Bubli explained, like it doesn't work. Uh, doesn't work uh, completely because of uh, the latest yeah, users. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, okay, can you give us some example of uh, programming tests and non programming tests that are related to using Yes, so um, the question was if I can give an uh, uh, example of uh, non programming and programming tasks. Uh, so the node programming would be uh, something like uh, like uh, um, the designing new icons. So uh, so like when you uh, when you have some skills uh, in 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 drawing, uh, you can you can see what icons uh, doesn't fit uh, the theme that that well, and you can improve them. Uh, also, um, when uh, you are not happy with the layout of of some dialog, uh, the dialogs now can be edited only using Glade. Uh, which is a GNOME tool uh, for uh, for laying out dialogs, so you can you can use it uh, without any programming skills uh, to reorganize uh, the tools, uh, the 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 buttons and the elements that are there uh, inside that. Uh, so that's for the non-programming. Or do you want some more examples? Or okay, and <laughs> for the for the programming tasks, so. Uh, it uh, it can be some small things uh, for which I uh, so for example uh, you wouldn't be unhappy uh, that uh, that something is missing in the in the for example the search toolbar that we have uh, so uh, because it doesn't contain all the functionality that is in the search dialog. So when you open the search and replace dialog, you can see that if you open there more, uh, there's uh, much more choices than you can see in the uh, in the toolbar for the search. So in case uh, you would be missing um, like some functionality that is that is in the search uh, dialog, uh, but is not in the search toolbar. Um, I think we currently have there the switch for uh, uppercase and lowercase and uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, we do not have there, uh, for example, switch for regular, uh, regular ex expressions. So in case uh, you would be using it that much, uh, that you would consider it that it should be there actually in the uh, in the in the toolbar as well, 
uh, then um, it would be quite easy programming task uh, to actually add this uh, functionality uh, to, to the toolbar so that so that people are able to to search for uh, for regular expressions uh, uh, in the in the in the search uh, search toolbar. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Yeah. What if I, for example, um, uh, try to uh, customize the dialogues via Glade? Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, for the translation uh, requirements, meaning that, as you may know, maybe some word is longer in one language than another, so I may need to move the, game, the widgets within the dialogue. So the question is, if I do that and I find it a uh, good choice and it works well, what better? Is it possible to uh, feed you back this modify and uh, eventually having it uh, in the packet in the um, localization package? Meaning that you know we download the, the vanilla version and after that you download also the localization and you apply that, you install that as well. Mm -hmm. I guess that it does apply, it does install the uh, language translations app and so on. Would it be possible to it? Uh, install also those uh, little files, the UX files, um, within the translation package? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, to repeat the question, uh, if it is possible, uh, if it is possible to have uh, like localized, uh, localized um, um, user interface files. So in the per first place, uh, I'm not convinced that it is necessary to do it per language. Uh, because uh, the, the entire point of using this layout uh, was to, uh, to sor sort out the problems that uh, the, some of the strings may be longer and some of the, uh, of the strings may be, uh, may be shorter. And in general, uh, if you see some cutoff uh, that is caused by, um, by uh, the word being too long, uh, it's a bug uh, that uh, that we need to fix uh, in the layout algorithm of the of the of the dialogues. So if if some cutoff like this happens, uh, it's a it's a problem of the uh, of the code, not of the uh, not of the dialogue uh, very usually. So uh, so that uh, that should be reported and uh, and we should have a look like what is the exact cause of this. Uh, and then the other thing is that, uh, like, if you if you change the dialogue uh, to to fit better your language, it is usually that it will fit other, uh, better other languages as well. So it is uh, usually uh, best just to find uh, some uh, some uh, consensus how to do it the best way, so that it fits all the, the all the languages and fix it just on one place and not to do it uh, like per localization. Because uh, the localization, localization packages contain only the help, and the translations themselves are part uh, directly of the of the LibreOffice uh, installation. So, so it even from the from the distribution point of view, it wouldn't make uh, much sense to, to just split it. So. But anyway, if somebody has a um, good uh, improving of the dialect, could just send you back within the list, for example. To, to That's possible, stuff. and I will teach you how to use Gerrit, so the next time you can do it directly via, via Gerrit yourself. Okay. <laughs> but of course, like uh, for the first contribution, uh, anything works, even pinging me on IRC. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so thank you so much. <laughs>